This lesson is going to be on a Buck of White song called Parchment's Farm Blues. And this, uh, the rendition that I'm going to be using for this lesson is going to be his uh, World War II year recording around 1940. And he did record a different version uh, during the revival in the 1960s, which I might get to in a different lesson. But for this particular recording, he did use cross note tuning. So basically, the tuning for the song is going to be vestibule open D tuning, but with a minor third instead of a major third on this fourth string. So we'll have the tuning for that in the info section below. And what I'll do is break the song up into two different sections going over each one. So I'll begin with the first section, which is the rhythm guitar of what he plays while he sings. those top three strings. Now you will be hammering into the first fret of the fourth string. So, so that's how it will begin. Two strums, each with a hammer into that first fret. Then you'll strum across those bottom strings once. Now it's the same strum on the treble side, except now you'll add in a note for the first strum, and that'll be the second fret of the fifth string. So you'll just add that in. And then for the next strum, will be as was played before without that second fret. So all together, that's one strum here. Now adding in that second fret, that, that next time I played it, I took out that second fret. Now this time I'm going to strum the, the bass side twice, and then same uh, picking pattern and uh, fingering for the treble side. Okay, so all together again. he repeats it again. So what I'll do is play it twice. Okay. And then after this he gets into his singing. And just preceding what we're going to play next with the guitar, it's just going to he just kind of fills in the gap with uh, some kind of slightly muted strums with the right hand. Uh, of course, in, in the right rhythm. And then what he'll do is get into this chord shape. So this will just be involving mostly open strings except for the second fret, which will have um, the second string and the fourth strings fretted. The rest will be open. And it'll just, it, for this chord shape, we'll be omitting the bottom strings, but it just involves those five strings. And here's where you can really dig in with your thumb. So you'll notice I'm kind of throwing in the odd upstroke. Also, the even more occasional sweep across the treble strings with my pointer finger. Okay, so once 
once you get comfortable and you can kind of play around with those until you really get that under your fingers so that you can throw them in whenever you feel like kind of adding something different for this particular section. So this can be, this, this little part of the song can be a little bit convoluted because what he does is he opens and closes his middle finger. pretty much get to totally understand this part is to remember that he plays four pairs of this and this. So one, two, and then three and four are a bit shorter. Three, four. Okay, so you'll notice that one and two, those first two pairs were twice as long as third and fourth pair. So again, you'll just be opening and closing this and you'll just have the same strumming patterns playing around again with your thumb with the upstrokes. And then also with the odd um, strum of the treble strings. Um, so if you just play maybe along with me, just playing this chord shape. So the first pair, cycle of these strums that we played in the intro. Okay. And then he kind of goes into another verse of singing, except rather than playing these strumming things, he'll just do a monotonous bass line on the bottom string and kind of play in unison with what he sings. So. So this is when he's kind of seeing this line, if I were to completely play it in unison. Okay, but he only really plays the roots. kind of doing is just strumming across those top two strings, mostly just the top string, but maybe just throwing in that, that fifth string as well for some fatness to the tone. Now the one thing to keep in mind for this section is to really have control of, the, of being on the beat and also being off the beat. So by being on the beat I mean Be having the flexibility to go because that will allow you to play in unison for if you would like to play the song when you sing. Being able to follow along with with the vocal part pretty much. So just getting a little bit of comfortability, comfort, I should say pardon my English, and um, just getting that independence between your thumb and uh, plucking fingers. Now, again, what you saw me do earlier was finish off by kind of playing, rather than the roots, that second fret of the top string. And then what he does is strums. You'll remember this chord from that previous section. He strums this. Now he, it's like we're only going to be playing pairs two, three, and four. Two, three, four. Okay, so once again going through those two sections once more.
to do is go back into this strumming pattern that we did for the intro. And again, just like the intro, we're going to be playing it twice. Alright, so that covers what he does while he sings. Now, if you grab your bottleneck um, for this next part, this will just cover what he does when he takes a little solo in between choruses. Now this particular part can be a little counterintuitive to what you might be used to playing if you play some bottleneck blues guitar. Um, but what I'll do is kind of quickly go over what he plays. So. Uh, This particular solo that he takes, um, what makes it weird is that the alternating bass starts with the root of the third string, which is on the third string, and goes down to the second string. So rather than going, which you might be more accustomed to, and I know that I'm more accustomed to that, he goes like this. starting with that third string, then going down, then going back up. And you'll notice probably at first your fingers will want to revert to making it this. But it's good for you to practice these um, different ways of, in this case, almost displacing the bass line by one beat. Now what he does on the treble side is he starts with a slide that goes up to the 12th fret on the top string. And what I, where I like to start is on the major third, which is on the fourth fret of the top string. And you'll notice he doesn't just quickly slide up like He kind of, for the, at least for the first time to my ears, kind of stays around on that fret for a little, little while, almost delays it. Okay. And then, of course, now just dealing with the treble side. Just slides from the second into the third, back to the second, and then plays the top string open, then the fifth string open. So once again. And repeats. And now what he does is he does a little fancy little thing where on the seventh fret, he kind of pulls off the seventh fret. Then again on the 9th fret, and then 12th. Now, this kind of thing sounds really fancy, but it's actually quite easy. Really, doing a pull-off with the slide is so simple. Really, you just lift off your slide, and it'll create the pull-off. Sounding, making it sound smooth, which obviously, as you can tell with me, I've only been playing this um, for a couple hours now. I'm not that comfortable with it yet. So this is something that really requires a, maybe a little more practice than what you would typically feel like you have to put in. So again, just taking it slow. Okay, 
So that pretty much covers Parchman's Farm Blues. If you've got any questions, of course, just let me know. I'm always there to answer them. But otherwise, thanks for watching.